So my name is David Capron. I'm the Vice President of Global Design Strategies at Marriott International, responsible for their distinctive premium brands, which includes Weston, Renaissance, Le Meridian, Autograph Collection Tribute Portfolio, Design Hotels, and also Gaylord Hotels. Uh, in my role, my team's function really is to create the strategic direction for design for those brands globally, and then work with our continent teams to implement those uh, design strategies to make sure that properties are uh, designed on brand. When we're creating both online experiences and actual physical on property experiences, it's incredibly important to allow those two to merge in some way. That is, of course, difficult because uh, there's nothing that really is a good substitute for actually being in a physical place. But some of the things that we have uh, available to us now, for example, virtual reality, augmented reality, those kinds of things are much, much better than your standard gallery of images that you normally would use as a search opportunity to understand what properties look like. The use of digital media by an emerging cohort of guests is really, really important. I always talk about my 17 year old and how his facility with using his digital devices is fundamentally shifting the way he wants to connect with brands. For example, we'll go out and we'll do story, we'll, we'll take a, a trip through a forest and I'll come back and post a story on Instagram and he'd come back and post a story on Instagram. Mine would be of a lovely sunset with trees and his becomes something very, very different. For him, the recreation of that story by doing overlays, adding graphics and doing some recreation of his experience as lived is really fundamental to what's happening because what it does is it changes his expectations about how he wants a story to be told. For him, it's really, really important that he is a direct participant in the making of the narrative as well as something that he consumes from some company. So his whole cohort of, of shoppers or experience seekers are not a one size fits all generation. They really are very much in, interested in creating the narrative and becoming immersed in the storytelling process because they're becoming so used to doing that on their digital devices and the way they tell stories through all of their social media feeds. I think the trends that we're seeing in terms of online in-room technologies and those kinds of things are really increasingly about customization. We're exceptionally good at capturing data. We know that. Uh, any of the large companies that are online companies are able to collect an extraordinary amount of information on their guests and use that through uh, algorithms to be able to create and craft experiences that are more uniquely focused on that particular guest. So that'll become increasingly important. More so though, how do I as a customer or the consumer of a, of a service or an experience or a product um, use my digital devices to be able to interact with, let's say, the space or the retailer in a way that's much more interesting. I think for me, the key here really is something I like to call technempathy. Are you as a retailer or the provider of a brand experience is using technology as a medium to connect in relationship? So technology being used in this service of empathic extension, how we, we use those devices to make the relationship better and stronger and therefore more meaningful. So those are trends that are happening. I think what you'll see is retailers and providers of brand experiences leveraging those kinds of technologies to more intimately connect at a relationship level with their guests rather than simply a vehicle for the acquisition or the purchase of some experience or a product or a service. Change is happening extremely fast. Staying ahead of your guests, I don't think it's actually possible. Though, I'll tell you, I've been to a number of conferences where I hear retailers talk about, well, we have to stay ahead of our guests. We have to stay out ahead of them. But the reality is, as you look at the pace of change, it's a non-linear equation, meaning that every year the pace of change speeds up, gets faster and faster and faster. So it's not a straight line that increases this way. It's a line that has a curve to it. And when you have that kind of experience, what it means is that staying ahead of your guests is actually increasingly difficult because if your strategy is to build a link in the bridge to connect to your guest in the way that you might have done that last year, for every link you build, the guest is moved three further away. For the next one you build, it's moved five further away. For the next one, it's moved 17 or some other you know, number further away. So if your strategy is incremental growth to connect, the mathematics don't actually prove out that you can actually connect to your guests. So the key really here is trying to find ways that we can leverage data and leverage technologies to stay in pace with our guests, which even at that is very difficult to do. 
So it's tough. And I think it's, uh, it is one of the largest challenges I think we face in the world of brand experience making is to stay ahead of your guests. I think if you follow the math, you just can't do it. The key really is how do we stay in pace with our guests, which really remains, uh, which really means engaging them in the making of experiences in real time. The idea that stories actually change your brain and influence brain functioning is critical. Because what you have to know is that if you see, hear, or, or listen to, or watch a story unfolding, whether it's on your phone or your, your, your desktop computer or in some other location, your brain reacts to those stories in as-if experiences. Meaning that if I see a story or hear a story about a father throwing a baseball with his son, my premotor functional areas of my brain are lighting up as if I'm doing it. Now, there's lots of other uh, functions that come into play so that I'm not walking around reacting and throwing and behaving in a way as if I'm doing those things. But it's important to understand that stories physically change the neurobiochemistry and the neurophysiology of your brain. That becomes incredibly important because it means that I begin to become literally the story and my brain changes so that I become the brand narratives that I begin to see on a very physical level. And when we understand that brain changes brain or stories change brain chemistry, releasing oxytocin, adrenaline, cortisol, and all those other kinds of brain chemicals, you begin to understand that you're not just imparting information, you're changing the way people physically are reacting to the nature of a story, and that can be incredibly powerful in terms of creating brand experiences. The reason why immersive digital experiences are more relevant is because we now have the capability to be able to turn the intangible data into tangible, which is to say that in the hospitality space, it takes us about five years to design and build a new building. We come back in the next seven years and we do a, what we call like a, a, a soft goods renovation. Carpets, wall coverings, fabrics, those kinds of things, things that can move. We come back another seven years later to do all case goods renovation, hard goods, which means cabinetry, things like that. If you look at the trajectory of a project, it's about 19 years. There's nothing in my 17 year old son's life that lasts for more than 19 minutes. And yet we keep on pushing product into the marketplace that at the very onset is already irrelevant because it's out of pace with the pace of change, at least the, the, the pace of change my son experiences every single day. Immersive digital allows us to do something extraordinary, which is that we can use digitexture to create deeply emotional sensory based experiences that can still be mediated through digital interfaces. I have hardware, I have software, and I have data. And when I can combine those three things, it means my building can react very quickly over day part. But even more so, if I have guests uploading content into the algorithm, the algorithm can change in real time. And that's incredibly powerful because it means they're directly involved in the making of experience. Much more relevant to them when they create the narrative of the story than being the one size fits all generation who simply thinks that something we create in the corporate headquarters is gonna be relevant um, for an individual guest and an individual experience at that place and time. It's incredibly important to understand this ephemeral nature of uh, brand experiences because it's the world in an emerging cohort of guests live in. I grew up in a world where architecture was supposed to last forever. I'm an architect. The periods, were, the premier pyramids were supposed to last forever. All these great iconic pieces of architecture that I grew up with were also created with a timestamp. They meant something in the time that they were created in, sociological, anthropologically speaking, spiritually. Those buildings were critical to how people experienced their world and the understanding that they got from what those, those architectural monuments were supposed to be. But we're moving now from monuments into moments where an emerging cohort of guests are very at ease with the idea that things come and go. They sort of move through their brand experiences in a very sort of a fluid way. Um, they're here today, gone tomorrow. That's very difficult for an older cohort of guests to sort of adjust to because they expected to have the thing and hold on to it forever. My father would straighten nails when they got bent to reuse them. Well, that's not the world my kid lives in. My two sons and an emerging cohort are ever more familiar and, and um, comfortable with the idea that things don't last forever. 
what'll be important for us is to be able to create experiences that match that sensibility, that they can still have great social impact, they can directly affect body and brain and the sort of affinity for a brand, but that they may last for a very short period of time. And for that guest, that seems to be perfectly okay. I guess I would say in summary, we have an extraordinary challenge in the hospitality and retail space to match this pace of change that an emerging cohort of guests really is living in and have become more familiar with. We build things that last for a very long time. Hospitality more so than the retail space who seems to cycle much more quickly. And we have to become more comfortable with matching their world rather than saying, no, no, they, they have to match my world of experience, which is 20 years out of pace with them. That's tough. I think that's tough for large corporations because I think what it requires is a growth mindset, one that's more flexible, one that sees the fluid nature of experience, not necessarily being less impactful, but just different. And when I think we can do that, we might likely have a greater hope of remaining relevant in a digitally mediated future for a whole cohort of guests who are playing by a different set of rules.